Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Barb Mitchell, and joining me today is Bram Singh, CEO of BDX Data Centers. Bram, so good to have you back uh, on JSA TV. It's been a little while, I feel like, and we have so much to talk about. Um, I think the first thing is that you guys are on the move, right? Uh, so, and and I mean literally and and figuratively, I suppose. But um, tell us about that. You've you've announced recently that you're moving your headquarters from Hong Kong to Singapore. Tell us why the move. Why now? Well, pr- hi Bob. First of all, yes, it's been a hi. while. Good to see you again. Um, it's ease of business, Bob. Singapore you know, eventually it just gets you because it's, it's so easy to work from here. Uh, and we all as a team decided that uh, if we have to grow in this region, then this was the place to do it from. Uh, and it's not just the travel, which is, by the way, critical, right? I mean, especially in these times of COVID. Um, so I was in San Francisco, uh, December, and I had to get back home to Hong Kong and I couldn't because the restrictions were so onerous um, that if they found me positive, you know, in their tests, that's it. I would be um, uh, isolated, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas for Singapore, I had to just hop on a plane. They call it a vaccinated lane. So everyone on the flight is vaccinated. You come to Singapore, you get tested, you test yourself seven days, Mm -hmm. and all the time you can go out, you can work. And if you're negative all seven days, you're, you're, you're off to the races. So th- th- that was, I, I tell you, very important, especially in this time of COVID, like I said, but not just that, also the ecosystem, right? I mean, if you, to, today, the talent pool is all here. F- for the engineers, we need the mechanical, the, the, the electrical engineers, the program managers, the architects, they're all here. Uh, the vendors are all here. Let's not forget that, right? I mean, we need the vendors for all our facilities. If you're building across the region, we have these global MSAs and all the large vendors are here. So that was was was, was key. And, and, you know, as a kid, I used to always wonder why uh, in, in, in Mumbai, Bombay, where I grew up, why all the traders of a particular commodity would be lined up on one street? Why? There were, all the silver guys would be in this street and the gold guys in this street. And that's because that was the ecosystem. That's the buzz they created. Well, guess what? For the same reason, data centers have congregated to Singapore. And if you look at, uh, you know, uh, between, between, let's say you, you fly from Europe, right? You fly, you hit London, Paris, Amsterdam, all big hubs. You hit uh, Frankfurt, another big hub, then nothing. Till you come to Singapore, nothing. Singapore is the next largest hub. So, you know, this is the place to be, Barb. Yeah, and, so, and, and outside of ease of doing business and proximity to, you know, the, the resources um, that you need to tap into, it's good for your customers too, right? I mean, just, you know, everything that's, that's happening in Singapore and, and whatnot, it, it's well, good for them as well. Well, it depends, right? I mean, yes, uh, uh, data centers are very local, you know? Uh, uh, so when you talk, oh, you mean the hyperscale customers, sure. Yeah, cloud, but, enterprise, uh, yeah. Well, enterprise customers, um, yeah, though though that wasn't the reason we, uh, our customers in Indonesia will be served from Indonesia, the ones in Singapore, Singapore, Hong Kong will be always served from Hong Kong. But it was the, it was the, 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 Travel, the especially in the times of COVID, it was the ecosystem, but very importantly, also the government. Right in Singapore, the government has made it easy for you. The rule of law, everything here is at least from a BDX perspective, it's the way we like it. Yeah, and then you have a government that is engaged with you. These guys will sit with you, they'll debate with you, they'll they, you know you can you can discuss policy with them, and then if if you're argument is logical, it prevails. We've been pleasantly surprised in Singapore, more so in many other countries where we have to, you know, uh, go through, I mean, things are a lot less clear. In Singapore, everything is clear. It's very clear. Doing business here is, the clarity is, is brilliant. So it's th- that ease. 
I know the moratorium and stuff. I guess you'll ask me about that. It 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 it, it has created a, a, a level of work we have to put into, but it's clear. Uh, dealing with this government, there's nothing nebulous about it. That that that's a lot, and that's why, by the way, just a little digression. That's why if you noticed all the data center players will either be in Sydney, or uh, so either Australia, um, Japan, uh, Hong Kong, or Singapore. Why? Because of the clarity of law, right? Right. Yeah, and I mean, you mentioned the moratorium. Obviously, that was um, probably going to be the next thing that I that I asked you about. But but actually, so we know about that. We know about that there, there was a moratorium. It's recently been lifted. And but I think you're right. You know, it's along with that comes real clarity about what's required by new players uh, in the market. But but also, I think it's an opportunity for for us to talk a little bit about just BDX and how you're approaching sustainability as a whole. I know there's a number of initiatives underway um, by you and your team. And can you talk about that? I mean, 360 views, the first one that, that comes to mind. Uh, I think we could talk for days about that. It's, it's quite a hefty topic, um, but can you give us the sort of the headline on that? Of course, man. So, you know, we are in the sustainability business, right? we're in the data center business, right? Um, but you can't escape it. We're such, the data center industry is such a guzzler of power. And we have all collectively got such a bad rap because of that, that we are very aware uh, of this and uh, make sure that sustainability is top on our list. More so in Singapore, where you can't get away from it, right? I mean, these guys have gone and committed to a carbon neutral Singapore by 2030. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, other countries have also made commitments, but I have yet to see a country outside of Europe that is so dead serious about meeting its commitments. So, you know what, guys, we have a moratorium, we'll live with it because we are just one of the little pieces in the jigsaw puzzle for Singapore to meet its carbon neutral commitments. So we too have committed internally that we will be carbon neutral, at least in Singapore, uh, by 2030. And for that, we are then tying up with our partner companies like Hexa, which is owned by our majority shareholder, and who is now you know, laying out solar plants, et cetera, uh, in the neighborhood, and and there's a there's a bid. Uh, Singapore is inviting ten uh, bids uh, over a tender to import renewable power into Singapore. So these guys are going to do it. We've signed a PPA with them. So on that part, making sure that we are carbon neutral um, uh, alongside Singapore by 2030, our operations. So that is requiring a lot of work from our side. Okay. Now, you mentioned 360 view. 360 view was my um, one of the reasons I'm excited about it. Besides it being such a brilliant product, is that it actually was my you know how people convert to becoming vegans. Mm -hmm. uh, something happens in their life. Well, 360 view happened in my life, and I tell you, it before this, Barb, I was you know sustainability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Data centers, we got to do it. We are guzzling power. We have to show commitment. Uh, I was never an eco warrior. Uh, and I, that's a very strong word, right? I'm still, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm still not there yet. But 360 View converted me, and it started off as a DCIM, the Data Center Information Management System, right? So that's how it was built, and we were running it for three years as a DCIM. And then the guys go and uh, it's got a very awesome power management uh, uh, features. So they built around it. They built sustainability, carbon accounting around it, connected it to a blockchain. So now you can, besides knowing your carbon footprint, you can actually make your greenhouse gas submissions to a carbon registry or a carbon blockchain. So when I saw all this, I started reading up because they would keep saying stuff I didn't understand. Uh, which happens all the time, though. But th this was, you know, I said, so, so I started reading up and I, I read up on sustainability. And, and that was a wow mo moment for me. Like, oh, my God, do these kids, these colleagues of mine, do they have any idea about the nut they have cracked? And apparently they did. You see, what I discovered was that, that the amount of fraud and gaming that was taking place 
in the carbon industry was phenomenal. You know, you had something called, um, what is the word for it? Uh, um, additionality. So there's something called additionality. That means, Barb, you, your carbon credit should be earned. In other words, it should actually be the reason why greenhouse gas to that extent was reduced. So, one, so really, one ton of carbon should come out of the atmosphere because of your carbon credit. And it, if, if you had not done that work, if you had not spent the time, effort, energy on that carbon credit, then that, uh, one, that carbon would still be in the air. So that people were working their way around it. And then they were doing reselling. We just, you know, they would take a carbon credit, sell to you. So you can offset. And then they would sell to me and I can offset. And there was no tracking. Yeah. All of this was because the, I call it the first mile. The, the, it, it, the carbon registry is here and the carbon footprint is here. To get from here to here, you need a consultant. And that consultant is paid by this guy. And so there's such a conflict of interest, right? And that's where all this is happening. 360 View addresses this in such an elegant way by automating the first mile and then connecting it to a blockchain. And now you have end-to-end -end visibility. Uh, it's just, it was just brilliant what these guys have done. And so we are really, uh, besides using it for ourselves, we're giving it away. So I want to make money from the DSIM. Hey, you know, Barb, you've got a data center. Please use my uh, 360 view. I'll make money out of it, right? But if you want to do sustainability, I don't want to yeah, take it. Take it. Just do it. So, so that is, uh, that's 360 view. Uh, you know, it's better convert out of me. Hopefully it'll make one for all of you too. Let's see. Well, yeah. And it, it shows sort of the, the passion you have behind the, the project, right? That you want people to, to hear about, to know about it, to use it. And ultimately to, to fix something that in, in some ways is, is broken, but, broken. but also yeah. is so important for our industry, but even beyond our industry, right? For the world. Well you know. said. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I feel like we, we could do, you know, uh, like I said, we could do a series of these because there's so much. You guys have been so busy and there's so many great things happening. It's exciting that you're moving to Singapore. It's exciting that you have 360 View and some, some partnerships I know underway and you were doing some expansions, you know, last year in, in Singapore as well. Um, I, you know, I think, and also I wanted to note to people that are watching this, that, that what you were just talking about, about 360 view, you've actually written, you know, some recent articles on that. So people can, can find out more information on it. Cause I do think it's a very interesting topic. And, and so, you know, we'll, we'll try to link to those so people can sort of dig to find more of, more of what you've written on the topic. Um, but I think that, you know, in the spirit of time, we'll leave that there and and come back and we can do another round of these. Sure. I know that um, you also are, are part of the, the Greener Data Initiative that's happening amongst the industry, and, and we'll have a chance to hear more from you then as well. Um, but anything just in a closing, you know, word, anything that you really wanted to share with us that's sort of upcoming here today? Well, What's upcoming is, uh, you know, the, the, the I, I think our initi uh, initiatives uh, in, in the region, right, are, 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 are all largely now green. Yeah. Our basis of design, uh, this education we've had on sustainability means that sustainability is now built into our basis of design. This is not easy, Barb, and uh, I was just talking to our team today, by the end, by the time we are done in Indonesia, for example, we would have spent a billion dollars in, in, in building out new data centers, buying some of them. And now that will include converting these to sustainable uh, facilities. And that is the big thing we are doing. So if anything, I want to leave you with and the uh, audience with this, uh, our passion towards sustainability and how not just in Singapore, though I must say Singapore has been where we really uh, had to sit down and understand the whole concept better on how to deal with scope one, scope two, scope three. And 
now that we have it is now embedded into our basis of design and you'll see how in indonesia for example when we build or in nanjing when we expand it's not going to be like how we would have done it say 5 years ago this is going to be the sustainability built into it and i'm saying this as the take away because i'm so terribly proud about this yeah. uh, that the team has done so yeah so with that i'll uh, Um, well, yeah, and it's it, so it, I think that um, your business being located in Singapore will be an asset to that whole market, given everything you've just said and the investment in the market and the commitment that you have to sustainability, which is obviously in line with what the what the government is looking to there and and some of the partners you're working with. So it's great, yeah, it's a, a great future for for BDX in in support of the industry and in support of the planet. So Sing- Singapore forces us to think. If there's one thing which Singapore does it forces us to think. Right. And, and when that happens it forces you to get better and everyone to get better. Yeah, it does it does. Thing, right? Yeah. It's yeah. Loving it. Yeah, well thank you Brom. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to chat with you. Uh thanks for your time today. Oh, pleasure. And thank you viewers for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA podcasts. Happy networking. Thank you.